in three, two, one. You got one. Oh, oh that <laughs> kind of hurt, actually. Are we ready? Just like that. Good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us on Channel 7 Daybreak this morning. Great to have Victoria Kapek in studio as Allison has the day off. Absolutely, Chris. Good to be here as always. Hey, if you're waking up now, you're waking up to typical August temperatures this morning. Meteorologist Melinda Mayo standing by to let us know what you can expect as you start your day. Melinda, good morning. A quick programming note for you this morning. ABC News will air a live special report at 9.30 a.m. for a Boulder, Colorado Police Department press conference following the shooting yesterday. In your morning business news, a company that makes technology for voting machines is suing Fox News for over a billion dollars. More than 2,000 new cases of COVID-19 were reported yesterday with 10 more people dead. The number of active infections is over 15,000. Georgia flipped the vote this morning. Joe Biden taking the lead over President Trump in just the past couple of hours. But as you can hear behind me, these protesters are starting to get a second, a third wind again. They're chanting again, I can't breathe. Uh, no justice, no peace. That's something we've been hearing a lot of here tonight. A protest is about having your voice heard, and we wanted you to hear from one of the voices that is out here today. This is Kendrick Alexander. He's a Conway resident. Kendrick, can you tell us why you're out here today? Well, I came to su support my people. This is just a part of the tree. The top portion and branch fell down onto the house, totally taking out the fence and obliterating a trash can right there, taking out this side portion of the porch and a part of the roof. The tree went through the roof on this side. Gosh, those are big snowflakes. <laughs> Allison, they are big snowflakes, and yes, they are getting in my eyes, but it's okay. We are out here for the viewers this morning. I want to show you guys, right, so we've been in front of I-30 all morning long, and I can see the road from right here. I'm wearing two pairs of gloves, two jackets, scarf, hat. You need to be wearing two pairs of socks and double pants if you can. These temperatures are dangerously cold and can be hazardous to your skin. As for your car, a few things I want to tell you if you have to get out there. First of all, you need to be having your car running for about 10 to 15 minutes before you even take to these roads that will protect your engine later on. If you do have snow on your windshield or on top of your car, you need to be cautious to brush all of that off before you hit the roads because the snow could fall onto your windshield, making it hard for you to see or could fly onto other cars behind you. Another thing that I want to ask drivers to do today, if you can pack an emergency bag. I even have one here in my KTV car this morning that has more clothes, you're going to have stuff in it like food, you're going to have water in it. Sources are calling you the whole package when it comes to oh. style, talent, personality, but they've been particularly interested in some of your looks. What yes. has been, would you say, one of your favorite looks to wear on the show? Oh, that's hard. I love them all. They're all my babies. I was already like a superstar. <laughs> Girl, you already are a superstar. I don't know who you're playing. And I bet that that just really, like you said, it made you feel that experience and see what everyone else is already seeing. Having a diverse group is probably causing some good discussions, even if they do get a little heated sometimes. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. Were you an athlete at all? Have you ever played any sports? I wasn't good enough at Catholic high school for boys. Renee, this feels like a I'm going to pay for someone else's coffee kind of day. It is, or let somebody in the grocery store line that has fewer items than you go first. Such a perfect example. In his store collection we had there, and I actually want to provide you some updates on the presidential election nationwide, some numbers here in Arkansas, and some results based on the second congressional district race here in Arkansas between Joyce Elliott and French Hills. Take a look at this thread. And after leaving several messages to Lang Holland and the mayor, Kevin Elliott, to no response, the mayor finally came out with a statement on Facebook saying that Lang Holland had resigned from his position. Michelle Bennett enjoys the beach as much as the next person. But unlike most women you'll see, she enjoys it topless. She's been going topless at Park Point Beach for two years and never had problems until last month. A woman approached me after about 20 minutes of laying in the sun without a top on saying that I was making her children uncomfortable. Bennett declined to put a top on, so the woman called the police. 
Bennett was later approached by a Duluth officer who didn't know if he could arrest her. He heard that someone had been refusing to put a top on and uh, that it wasn't a nude beach. I pointed out to him that I wasn't nude, I was topless. Bennett referred the officer to a Minnesota law that says a person can't publicly expose their private parts. But that same law doesn't say if a woman's breasts fall under that category. A separate Minnesota law does say, however, nudity includes a woman's breasts. But nudity is only defined as illegal if you're presenting it to an audience. Bennett says she wasn't doing this for an audience, and because of that, wasn't breaking a law. I wasn't being lewd. I was just laying in the sun, minding my own business. It's why police chose not to arrest her. In the end, they really couldn't establish whether or not I was breaking a law because of that ambiguous language. Duluth police say because of the law's ambiguity, each individual situation is determined by how much of a disturbance it's causing. If there's people that are around that are feeling uncomfortable with behavior that's attached to a law stating that that behavior um, it isn't legal, then, you know, that's that's a point to step in. We spoke to people at Park Point Beach to hear what they thought about a woman being topless there. Some had no problem with it. If they're not just slashing around, but if it's just minding their own business, totally fine with that. Some disagreed. In an area like Duluth, where that's not common, are you doing it because you're trying to bring attention to yourself? But almost everyone we spoke to said that if the language is ambiguous, it should be changed. I think if you wanted to make it more legal, you should be more specific about it. Other than that, I would say keep doing what you're doing as long as you're not bothering anyone. Unanimously, I think we'd like that language to be clarified and for the police officers to all be aware of what the actual law is. Bennett eventually did put her top back on that day. But after that incident, she reached out to Duluth Mayor Emily Larson and the city attorney hoping to make a change regarding the vague laws so she doesn't run into that experience again. I don't think that we can just put our tops on every time someone says that, you know, you might be doing something wrong.